So this post was posted in the relationship subreddit. The boyfriend is 26, she's 30. She says, my boyfriend wants to have kids with me, but doesn't understand why I want him to get a job that makes equitable money to me instead of just playing music in his bands. This already tells me where this is going. Why is she with this 26 year old? But okay, let's let's get into the post. She makes, she says, I make about $65,000 while my boyfriend only makes about 30 as a musician. He only works weekends. His parents bought him a house and half of his income is renting out additional rooms. Recently, the conversation on having kids came up and I said I didn't feel comfortable being the breadwinner of the family and also the baby maker, citing re um, reasons of concerns of not feeling equitable um, support and vulnerable if I were to have a complicated pregnancy or postpartum, which may result in me needing to take additional time off of work. I don't have paid maternal care or worse, lose my job. Considering the cost of things right now, especially baby costs, I think it's completely unreasonable to expect to live off such little income with the newborn. My recommendation was for him to get an at-home job like I have, since he doesn't do much during the day, during the week anyways, and, I, and it will allow him to still play music on the evenings and weekends. He thinks this is unreasonable because he makes enough um, doing what he likes to do and says we will save around $2,000 a month on daycare costs since he'll be home during the day while I'm working my at-home job. Am I being unreasonable for thinking this isn't equitable or feeling like being pregnant and being reasonable for making a majority of the income is too much pressure? He doesn't seem to consider that I have interest and in play music in my free time too, but this arrangement would make all of that impossible. He has recently said maybe we aren't good for each other and maybe he should date a younger woman with less time on her biological clock so he can make more money being a career musician before he has kids instead of considering a day job. I thought that was really hurtful and I just don't understand if my requests are unreasonable. What I said at the very beginning, why are you with a 26 year old who is not making very much money even considering this? It doesn't make any sense to me, but um, that that is my suggestion. Get with someone that is already on your level instead of trying to pull this person up who doesn't have the, the drive or ambition to even get on your level, even after having that conversation. What he said was probably hurtful because yes, you are older. And by the time women hit 30, sometimes that makes our brain go a little bit crazy. And it does make our biological clocks tick a little bit faster if we wanted to have kids. But it should that should be the impetus to just find somebody on your level already instead of thinking that this man is magically going to just start being on your level. Some of the comments. Someone quoted her quote of talking about the biological clock and said, and you want to have kids with this winner? And this person says, and you're still talking to this winner? And this person says, and you haven't kicked this winner's ass to the curb so fast that he'll be accelerating when passing through Cooper Belt. I don't know what Cooper Belt is. This person says, it's sad, but some people really do have so little self-respect that they don't recognize just how awful a comment like this is. Exactly. This was a terrible comment, but that should have propelled her out of this relationship. Okay, so this person says, only young women without much experience would put up with such nonsense. A guy who only works on the weekends, perhaps his parents have a trust fund for him the OP doesn't know. And then the OP says, I can confirm they don't, not even an inheritance. They did buy him the house, though. They own it. So then the OP must have been reading a bunch of comments. She came in and created a very long comment instead, um, instead of editing or making a new post. She says, hi, everyone. OP here. Thank you for all the tough love comments. I'm working on leaving. There's a few strings I need to tie up, but my mind is made up. I want to clarify that I live in my own apartment I rent in the city center, and obviously I have my own income and things. Leaving will not be difficult. Just want to clarify that this was not a rage post. This is, in fact, a situation I'm dealing with right now. For more context, if you're curious, the musician in question plays fiddle in country bands and sings and plays guitar in burger joints and retirement homes. He isn't a touring musician. The furthest he goes is a driveway away to play fiddle for people no one here will ever hear of.
<laughs> he has reminded me that he wants to be a stay-at-home dad, despite never having taken care of a kid before. He has nieces and nephews and has never left longer than an hour. I'm sorry, and never been left longer than an hour with them at a time. He has never changed a diaper. And if you're wondering what I saw in this guy, he was incredibly kind and very much a caregiver up until the last 24 hours. The biggest problem he seems to be having right now is how much I spend on myself for things like organic groceries, getting my hair done, nails done, etc. My budget has not changed in the year that we have been dating, aside from double cost for groceries since he's had at my house so often. It's just suddenly an issue to justify why he shouldn't get a day job. I should spend less money on my self-care because he doesn't need to make extra money. Um, <laughs> but I also want to know what exactly is the game plan for men like this? Do these people actually find women to pay all the bills so they can sing Stevie Wonder at a dive bar? I feel like any woman who would be naive to do this would be too young to have the income to support it. I don't know. But then again, here I am. Anyways, thank you all. I don't I didn't feel comfortable talking to anyone in my friend group about this. I can confidently say um, you won't be seeing my post two years from now asking if I should break up with my husband. I'm out. I'll send up another update if anyone is invested. Someone raised their hand. I'm invested. Please share an update when you can. Also, once you've left him, I hope you can spend a little more money getting your nails extra fancy in your next appointment. Maybe throw in a hair mask extra treatment when the next time you're in the hair salon, get a facial or massage maybe, some tasty organic ingredients and make yourself a delicious solo meal date to enjoy your um, own city center apartment. You deserve to spend your money on whatever you want. You deserve so much more than this man. You already know that though. Go you. So please, you're leaving and completely understand why you didn't want to talk to your friends about this. I can tell this is going to be the start of a new chapter for you. And I have a feeling it's going to be a very good one. That's a great comment to end this one. And I will let you guys jump in. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Okay, so I saw this one in the True Off My Chest subreddit. Actually, I think it was reposted in the Ricky Reddit. Um, she says, I got a tummy tuck and found out my husband is cheating on me. Tummy tuck surgery is no joke. The pain is intense. I literally can't do anything. My husband has been helping me get out the bed and walk to the bathroom. My husband has to assist me with everything. He even had to wipe my butt after I pooped. No, I didn't get a tummy tuck for anyone other than myself. I went through pregnancy and lost weight and was left with saggy skin. And I always knew I was going to get a tummy tuck. Now I got it. It's just really tough right now. I'm only on day four of my recovery, so I have to stick it out right now. It's just even hard because I found out my husband has been cheating on me since I was in my third trimester of pregnancy, which was three years ago. I wouldn't have ever found out about this if I didn't ever pick up his phone. I found out yesterday about his cheating. I used his phone because his phone was the closest to me and mine was not near me. As soon as I opened up his phone, it was different. He had hidden photos of his girlfriend. She's in college and she is beautiful. This hurts. My husband is cheating on me with a girl that's half our age. Yes, she knows that my husband is married. I saw their messages. They talk about me. I'm sorry, they talk. They often talk about me. She's not very kind. She's superficial and she called me ugly and that old lady. And she apparently understands why my husband is cheating on me. She thinks my husband is too handsome for me. Looking back on the dates from these messages, he lied to me about his whereabouts while he was actually with her. My husband treats his girlfriend better than me. He takes her out on dates. He holds her hand. He messages, messages her to drive safely and sends her good morning, beautiful, and good night, beautiful text messages. He calls her sweet girl. He tells her he loves her. He cooks for her. He makes an effort to do nice things for her. They both will spend time with each other 40 minutes away in her town and they will act like they are together in public since no one knows them in that town. He's, he spent last Valentine's Day with her. I learned my husband started cheating on me because I lost my sex drive during my pregnancy. His affair started to be um, with a friends with benefits thing, but then they eventually, be, um, then they eventually being in a, a relationship and started having feelings for each other. They got a little waffly there, sorry. 
I haven't said anything to my husband. I'm just so devastated. I'm also so vulnerable right now because after my surgery, I don't have the energy to fight about this right now. And I really need someone to take care of me until I can do everything for myself again, especially since I have no one else. I have no one now other than my son, but he's so young and I can't tell him all of this right now. I'm just trying to keep it together. When we get in relationships, we have to remember to keep our friendships solid, our familial connections solid if there was no issues, you know, obviously with abuse and that kind of thing. We have got to keep our bonds strong, keep our communities tight because of things like this. You never know. This is another reason why orbiting around a spouse is not great because when that when you stop orbiting or when that person is no longer the right fit for you, then everything will be devastated. Your world will crumble. Do not center your spouse or significant other, especially at the cost of your other relationships. It's just not good. She's in this situation where she has nowhere to turn, no one to talk to, and no choices but to depend on this man who has failed her who has lied to her, who has not been a good partner to her. All right, let's look at some of these comments. This person says, when I got a tummy tuck, my ex-husband said he would not be there to help me because he was opposed to it. It was just pregnancy skin. The doctor was shocked, but it was all pregnancy skin. But I had very large babies and I'm a small person. My ex-husband had issues with his weight and eating habits, but I could not just lose the extra skin. This wasn't the only issue, but the jealousy over a quick fix was one of them. The other was that he was apparently already cheating on me and or had done so multiple times in our relationship. So he assumed I was going to have a tummy tuck to attract men. If he was seeking approval and attention outside of the marriage, he assumed I would be also. So of course, if I was going to have surgery and not seek his approval, he wouldn't help me afterward. I told him not an issue. I have friends help. Then I was making him seem like an a-hole because it would look bad if I did that. So he reluctantly barely helped. No time off work. We separated a few months later when he finally spiraled enough to make the issues very obvious and public. I thought he would enjoy having a skinny hot wife again. He wanted to. He wanted me to be as unattractive as possible for other people. She says, edit. I didn't know he was cheating on me until after he accused me of cheating on him out of the blue. With monogamous straight women. I have multiple kids, volunteer 30 hours a week with a nonprofit, was class mom, PTA mom, taught Sunday school classes and volunteered with all the scouts because I wasn't allowed to work. I barely had time to shower every day, let alone time to cheat. LOL, what? I also look effing amazing now and I'm allowed to have a job and go to school while not having to deal with that sack of nonsense. Number one with this one, this is the reason why stopping working and thinking that you're not allowed to do something is the difference between being a trad wife and a stay-at-home mom. Stay-at-home moms know and understand that you should you should be able to go back to work at any time. You're staying out of the workforce for a specific reason. Maybe it's money. Maybe it's um, you know the child care crunch. Whatever. This woman's talking about she was not allowed. That is completely different. This is the reason why you need to have plans B, C, D, E, all of that, because you really don't know like how some controlling people could be abuse, cheating, blah, blah, blah. You just never know. Anyways, this person says, I'm glad you didn't just get rid of the excess skin, but the dead weight of that awful man. I'm happy for you, Internet stranger. So this person says, so happy for and proud of you. I went through so much similar with my ex fiance as far as him manipulating me to look as unattractive to others as possible. Over the um, near seven years we were together, I was only allowed a full-time holiday season job at Toys R Us because he was laid off and wanted to chill at home all day, still left all household childcare to me after my nine hour shifts. Um, she says, if there's any advice I could give to anyone in a monogamous relationship is that this is a huge red flag. I'd have saved at least four to seven years with him if I had known that this person was projecting their guilt and insecurities onto you. Obviously not 100% of the time, but I dare say most of the time. My ex started off slow and would just dog any dudes lock looking at me. Then came the, let's go get you some mom appropriate clothes. Then literally even placing an order at a restaurant with a male waiter became an anxious game of, 
Don't look him in the eyes, but also don't look like an abused wife. Then the person says, and then it was any other human. She says, I was early 20s at that time, be it an 80-year-old man in a wheelchair or a teenage girl at the local burger place. In private, he'd insist I was IFing them or giving help me eyes. Looking back, it was absolutely bonkers, but Stockholm Syndrome is a hell of a monster. Basically, it sounds like people just have to have that plan B, C, D, E, F, G that I'm always talking about. Anyways, jump in the comments. Let me know what you think about this one. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. So I saw this post uh, scrolling my Facebook page. Someone actually did post this on my Bourbon Bougie subreddit. But the, the comment from Tam Straight Forward says, Woo child, I keep trying to get some work done, but um, Facebook effery keeps pulling me back into the streets. Congratulations to the happy couple. Dude couldn't just leave well enough alone with the first post. He came back with the 17 years three prison sentences, two kids, thousands of dollars in commissary, but baby, she finally got her man. So I'm going to blow up these posts so you can see them bigger, but this is the post. <laughs> these struggle love posts are amazing and we're going to read. Okay, so we got Ted and Desiree. He says, a few years ago, I was working for a temp agency, trying my best to leave the streets alone, but I wanted to take my best friend somewhere special for Valentine's Day. We ended up the, we ended up at the Capitol Grill that night, and not even five minutes after being seated, I realized I wouldn't be able to afford dinner that night. Desiree Holden didn't make me feel no type of way. She just smiled and said, it's okay, we can go somewhere else. We got up, she held my sweaty hand, and we made the walk of shame together. Fast forward, I took her back to the same restaurant last night, this time with a career in um, with the city of Orlando and an engagement ring in my pocket. Long story short, my best friend said yes. And as Tam said, maybe if he just would have left it here, that would have been fine, but now he needed to expound on things. Ted says to Desiree, first and foremost, I would like to say thank you to everyone who showed love, and those who still are. I didn't expect any of this when I made that post, but it's truly amazing and a surprise to receive so much support. The people you see in those photos are who we grew into. We didn't turn into them overnight. This is 17 years and two kids later, three prison sentences, thousands of dollars in commissary, and two trials, one in which she was six months pregnant yet and still at every court date. I've tried countless times to push her away because I felt she deserved better, but she refused to give up on me. And for that, there's nothing I wouldn't do for her. Again, thanks to everyone for all the love and support. We truly appreciate it. Yes, she got her man. 17 years and three prison sentences. She got her man. Though. Yes. Here's Desiree. Here's Ted. And I am not going to editorialize a lot, but I will read some of the comments because, like I said, I pulled this one from the um, from the Facebook post. Tam says, just give me the cats, please and thank you. Kay says, just think, ladies, you too can have a man who leaves you pregnant, goes to prison three times, has you spend thousands of dollars on him instead of the children you're solely responsible for, and waste 17 years of your life if you're willing to leave the Capitol Grill and go somewhere else because your king can't afford it. Yes, and then finally be able to afford it 17 years later. This person says, when I read the initial post, my thoughts were, he didn't know how high the Capitol Grill is. What a poor planner. Ray says, he tried to push her away, but she felt like she was what, I mean, he was what she deserved. If she's happy with that, more power to her. She knows her worth more than we do. All right, there you go. That's what Ray Nakia said, it all lost me at 17 years. Nope, this is not the energy I want in my space at all. Candy said, I knew this was off when I read the post, the first post days ago. Brianna says, tuh, is all I'm going to say. C, C. Jordan says, some people love hearing stories where a woman has gone through hell and back with a man before she gets a ring. But the moment the relationship ends, these men are going to be telling her she should have chose better. Absolutely. LaVonda says, I hope during those 17 years, sis was living her life to the fullest and not waiting up for him. How? She was taking care of two kids by herself and he was in prison and she was working to send him money. How could she literally be living it up? 
<laughs> Tabari says, when your God is from Timu, and then does these praise hands. Um, Kat says, I mean, he literally just ruined it with the second post. Ingrid simply says, wishing them the best. And Phoebe, this is how I'm going to end this. Struggle love, low self-esteem, and the ride or die fallacy have entered the chat. With that, I'm going to say some people do want to have that peen haver, no matter what, just to simply say they have one. And Desiree is one of those people. Anyways, you guys jump in the comments. Let me know what you think about this one. Don't forget to like, comment, share. Finally, I saw this post scrolling and I saw this one in the Kevin Samuels Died group. Y'all need to see this. I'm going to read you the post and then show you who posted this. Okay, so this this is from King Virgo. He says, King Virgo just letting y'all know that right now it's probably a woman in you timeline who will be single for the rest of her days. Forever cool enough to have S-E-X with, not quite great enough to acknowledge as their one and only. Her days will be forever filled with break in case of emergency peen, guilt ridden drunken sessions at the bar, empty promises, and attention seeking posts on social media. Hashtag woe is her. <laughs> Y'all have got to see King Virgo. I introduce to you King Virgo. King Virgo, audacity and struggle beard. These sparkly teeth yes king virgo for you guys hold on i got one more pick i i am baffled i'm baffled but this is where we are just nerve gall bad grammar struggle takes tick just terrible anyways this is how i'm going to leave you um if you made it this far go ahead hit Subscribe if you haven't yet. And go ahead, just let me know what you think of King Virgo and his hot take for the day. Woe is him. He says woe is her. I say hashtag woe is him. And woe is anybody that has to be around this person. Jump in the comments, like, comment, share.